Hey guys, I feel like it's been a minute since we last caught up. It has been a while and there have been so much changes in my life and I need to catch you guys up on that. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you guys are new here, hi, my name is Bianca and I am a 24 year old living alone in New York City. And yeah, it's been a while since we caught up and I feel like there's just a lot to update you guys on about my life. As you guys know, I just moved to New York almost a year ago and I feel like I'm an entirely different, a new person and in a good way. So. Yeah, I hope you guys are excited to catch up. So grab a snack, grab a drink because today's video is going to be super fun. I'm going to try to make this interactive and do a little vlog as I answer questions along the way. I went over on Instagram and asked you guys to send in some questions and you guys sent in a lot. How's life living in New York? So I've been living here for nine months already and I can't believe it's been that long. Time flies by so, so, so fast in New York. I love it so much. Like, I don't think there's anywhere else I would rather live at this point in my life. I really enjoy just the atmosphere, the energy. It is like go, 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 go here in New York. So I feel like that really gave me a lot of discipline, lots of structure. It is a rough city to live in. If you let yourself go, it's hard because no one else is going to pick you back up and put yourself together like yourself and a good support group and support system. Overall, I've been good and I've been happy, so yeah. What's your favorite thing in your apartment? Ooh, I have been working on my apartment for a while now, but so far it's been looking good. I got an espresso machine, which I am so freaking excited about. Like my biggest dream is to open up my own cafe or restaurant so i've been like experimenting with different kinds of drinks i want to show you guys my coffee machine because i have been looking forward to waking up every day in the morning just to make my coffee and guys i was never really the biggest coffee drinker but over here in new york you kind of need the coffee to stay up and to be awake and to get all the things you need to get done done look at my coffee machine this is the Saita's all-in-one espresso maker machine. I literally feel like I have my own cafe in my apartment. And living in New York, buying coffee or drinks is just way overpriced. And I cannot be doing that every day. So this machine has literally made my mornings so much more exciting. And it just elevates the at-home coffee experience. And it just makes me feel like I'm bringing a cafe into my apartment. So I'm gonna show you guys how I make my brown sugar cinnamon oat latte and it is the best thing ever, so let's go. It's super simple, convenient, and user-friendly with its straightforward LCD display screen. It has a simple one-button operation so that you can adjust the value to get the coffee you want. I love how this coffee machine can make all types of drinks that coffee shops offer whenever I want, such as espresso, americano, lattes, cappuccinos, etc., all in the comfort of my own home.
here we have my brown sugar cinnamon oat latte and guys this is so good honestly i feel like it's way better also than the ones in cafes so if you guys are interested in elevating your at-home coffee experience i highly recommend you guys get this machine because it literally is what makes me look forward to getting up in the morning this is like the best thing ever and my favorite thing in my apartment i'm gonna leave the link to this down below so you guys can check it out i hope you guys are having your morning coffee as well how does it feel like living in a new big city alone hmm. I think it feels very exciting and freeing, liberating. Yeah, I think it's very exciting, especially when I get to discover new spots in the neighborhood. Tell us more about your work. So I do marketing for an events company in Soho. I get to be around a lot of different kinds of corporate groups. We help them plan events and host parties. I run the social media pages for the company and I help them with outreach for influencers, answer emails, check out some statistics, reach out to some publishers. Yeah, I'm very lucky because all of my coworkers are around my age and we just get along and it's really fun. So I do enjoy my job. I'm just not gonna say where I work because safety purposes. And I also do content creation as well as you guys know, on YouTube and Instagram. But yeah, I think I'm gonna start getting ready because we are about to head out and explore the town. So I'm gonna get ready and pick an outfit. It's quite chilly outside, so we're gonna see. So here is my fit for today. I haven't had lunch yet, so I think our first stop is gonna be Tompkins Square Bagel because I really want a bagel right now and I wanna sit in the park. So I got myself a tofu scallion and artichoke cream cheese bagel with tomatoes on a multigrain everything bagel. Pros and cons of living in New York. So there's definitely a list of pros and cons that I've came up with and I would definitely say that the pros outweigh the cons. Love how diverse the city is and how there's so much opportunities for me here. Like as long as you work hard and you're smart about it and you network, make the right connections, you literally have so much opportunities available. Also, I really love how it's a walking city, so I can just walk everywhere. I don't need to have a car. I also really like how you can't really run out of things to do in the city. That's like one of my biggest pros. The cons that I can think of right now are, number one, the main con is how expensive living here is. When I started living here, I was like, damn, budget yourself when you live here, because if you don't, it's very easy to get carried away and spend money unnecessarily. And another con that I can think of is there's kind of a little bit of pressure to like keep climbing the ladder and keep doing more because everybody around you is so successful. So there's a little bit of that pressure I think and it gets very mentally overwhelming and overstimulating sometimes if you don't know how to separate yourself from your work. How do you find friends in a new city? And I think this is a really good question because that was like the number one thing I was most scared of moving here all alone is how to make friends and I think that one thing that really helped me is really just going out of my comfort zone and reaching out to people, especially using social media. I think it's just such a great tool to connect with other people who live in the same city that you're moving to as well. And also it was really helpful for me because I did have like a couple of friends who were also moving the same time that I was. So yeah, it's really important to just put yourself out there, say yes to a lot of things because you never know who you're gonna meet. The friends that I am super close with right now, I met unexpectedly by saying yes to like going out to spontaneous nights, spontaneous things, quality over quantity always because you can have so many friends in New York but if you're in the wrong crowd or in the wrong circle then it's not gonna be helpful or beneficial to you. So yeah, it's very easy to be sucked into the wrong group of people here. So you have to 
be careful with that. Don't be afraid to be the first one to reach out because more often than not, everybody is just waiting for who's going to make the first move. So that is my biggest piece of advice in making friends in New York. Although New York is a very, very social city, I really enjoy spending time by myself and prioritizing having self-dates like this and stop waiting on people just to like do activities that I really want to do. Is it safe to live alone as a woman in NYC? My dream place, but I've heard scary stories. I feel like everywhere has some kind of scary, as long as you know to avoid the areas that are generally unsafe. But it's always important to still make sure that you have high levels of alert and awareness whenever you're going around, wherever you may be, whether that's in New York or not. I do feel a lot more safe in New York compared to other states or cities that I've been to alone because the thing about New York is that there's always people around everywhere so since there are a lot of people in your surroundings that are able to witness and watch if anything bad happens to you so something that I like to do when I'm walking all by myself at night and I just want to have that extra layer of security is I call somebody on the phone on FaceTime and make sure that I'm talking loud so that the people around me or if I feel sketchy know that someone's on the phone with me. One thing you realize living alone. So I think the biggest realization that I had is I need my own personal space and time to recollect myself. I wouldn't mind having roommates but at this point in my life I really do enjoy spending time by myself and I never really had like my own room growing up. So this is my first time having my own space and getting to call it my home which I've been enjoying. It's such a nice day today also. I also feel like moving to New York made me more extroverted than back home because over here I feel like it's very easy to see your friends and to just make plans. I do try my best to say yes to all the plans that come my way. It's the way I would literally trade an arm and a leg to live in the West Village but even then it probably wouldn't be enough. Now I'm walking to take the subway because we're gonna head to Chelsea Market. So right now we're in Chelsea Market. So I got a strawberry lychee green tea. I'm gonna do a taste test. I've been walking around the whole day guys. I'm so tired. So now's the only time I actually get to sit down. Mm. Mm -hmm. What are your top five affordable but great food in New York City? I don't really memorize them on the top of my head. But I'm gonna pop them on screen so you guys can see. I have a list on my phone of all of the cafes I want to go to and spots. Libre is really good. La Cabra, they have really good matcha and cardamom buns. Um, Red Gate Bakery has yummy banana bread and like just pastries. Um, Two Hands is good for brunch. Oh, I also have like a couple of cafes that I like to work at, so Biblioteque is really good. Devotion is really good for working 
The bean is good because they close late. Some of my recommendations that I have around the city. So I'm walking to go to the High Line and that's where they have like nice views of the city and it's supposed to be around this block if I'm not mistaken. Actually, I don't know what I'm talking about. This would be a nice area to go jogging, especially when it's warmer. And I love like passing by the luxury apartments and like seeing their apartment view. I think this used to be like a train track as well, as you can see. A lot of you guys seem to be curious about my love life. Are you single? And yes, I am single. I think I'm just in the era of my life right now where I am enjoying being single and hanging out with different kinds of people and just like not really taking anything seriously because right now my main focus and priority is myself and growing there are a lot of people who come in and out of the city so I try my best not to be attached even if I really like the person can you give advice on how to cope up with a heartbreak? I would say the best and biggest piece of advice I would give you guys is to let go and move on in order to make space for people who actually value you and your presence in their life. I don't even want to like guess how much these units are. Isn't that so cool? It looks like a disco wall. This is another good food spot in the city, it's called Pier 57. They have like a market where you can try a bunch of different food. I love coming here solely for the rooftop park. I've always been curious if you've got a boyfriend or are dating anyone at the moment or do you love being alone? So... Okay, I have been going on dates and been seeing a couple of people here and there and I think it's been fun. I really do enjoy trying to get to know people and really just see what I like in a person, what I don't like. So yeah, I have been dating around and just trying to meet people. I don't try to take it too seriously and try my best not to get attached to people quickly because you never really know how fast someone can switch up on you. It's meant to be fun, but at the same time, I also do love and enjoy being alone and spending time by myself. I feel like it just made me learn a lot more about me as a person. I think that if you're always with a partner or if you have been in a relationship for a long time, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. Like good for you queens there isn't really that much room to explore or navigate being alone because when you are always or constantly in a relationship or surrounded by other people you may say that their opinion doesn't matter or you may say that you know you are independent from this person which is true but at the same time you still have to consider and coexist with someone else and I think that takes away from just having 100% energy and focus on your own growth as a person and I think that's where I'm at in my life right now is I just want to put all of my energy towards getting to know myself so yeah I'm not really in any rush especially since my last relationship did end in a pretty traumatic way I do try my best not to talk about my past relationships or how it ended and all of that but I think it is important to give context it was tough to go through especially having to go through it alone in New York and not really having a support system yet back then when it happened and that was one of the hardest things that I had to go through all I'm gonna say is loyalty guys you may be with someone for a really long time but I realized that none of that matters length does not determine the quality of your relationship and it's not substantial you know so that's all I'm gonna say that's all I'm gonna say about that anyway isn't my view so nice it just made me a lot tougher and made me realize that I am worth so much more than the way people treat me so yeah this is like one of my favorite spots in the city 
there's not much people around here and you get like the best view of Little Island and the financial district so it's really nice um, but yeah this is the rooftop park in Pier 57 it's so nice here during the summer is there any dating situation going on and I think you're asking if I have any situationships going on and no I do not I will say though that I was talking to this guy that I really liked for quite some time you can never really be sure in New York or be attached to people because you never really know what's gonna happen or what it's gonna look like a few months down the road so it was an experience anyway so I'm gonna do it I don't even know if that was considered a situation trip or not but I was hanging out with this person the common misconception is that if you're seeing more than one person at a time it kind of makes you like a little hoe or slut which I totally disagree with because that's the way dating should be you want to see who fits best with you I think coming from the Philippines it's very like normal or traditional to just be seeing one person at a time but here in New York it's the complete opposite like you have to get out there and you have to see your options and not just focus or give all your time and energy into one person because more often than that that person you're talking to is also talking to other people so why should you just pour all your energy into them i will say though everybody's dating style is different and some people prefer to just date one person at a time and get to know them but i have just learned to apply the law of detachment and not just pour all my energy and all my eggs into one basket because you never really know what's gonna happen or what the intentions of the other person are i wouldn't want to say keep a roster but keep a roster what is your main goal in life when i was younger i would always say that my biggest dream and goal in life is to move to new york being able to say that i was able to do it at the age of 23 and all by myself is just such a crazy achievement to me. I would really love to put up my own cafe that turns into a cocktail bar at night. So that is my next biggest goal, I guess, or dream to achieve. But we'll see if that's even doable because I don't know if that is possible, but hopefully it is. What do you miss the most in the Philippines that you don't have in New York? The food? Um, my family and I guess how like affordable things are because here things are so expensive and also the beach because let me tell you the beaches here just don't hit the spot why did you leave the Philippines I left because I feel like my life was too stagnant there I was craving for change I left because I was too comfortable and I think growth starts outside of the limits of what you already know so also, I've always wanted to live in New York ever since I was younger, so I figured if not now, then when? You know? So that's why I am here in New York. Can you see yourself living in NYC for the rest of your life? I think it's too early to tell. I've only been here for about a year. Right now, I'm loving living here in my 20s, and I feel like there's no other place in the world that could shape me like New York and especially in my early 20s so is New York forever? I'm not sure. I think those are all of the questions that I'm gonna answer for this video. Thanks so much for joining me and coming around New York with me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I will see you guys next week for another vlog. Bye!